So good morning. I want to first start by saying that um, I truly understand what Father Lester says now when he tells us it is a gift to pray with you because it is truly a gift and it's a joyful privilege, my joyful privilege, to be able to worship and share the love of our Lord with you today. Um, I am definitely a little nervous. You can probably hear it in my voice. This is my first time um, serving with you in this capacity. I know I've been here um, for a while now. But my heart, my heart is calmed knowing that I am in the midst of my St. Mary's family. So, and I know the Lord is my shepherd. So when I saw that the readings this week included Psalm 23 and the reading from Jeremiah, I smiled and I thought, he is already showing me once again that he will lead me in the direction that I am supposed to go. So writing a reflection, by the way, is no joke. It comes with a lot of responsibility and pressure. So I appreciate your indulgence this morning as I tell you a little story about myself. And hopefully when you listen, um, I invite you to reflect on your own journey and how you experience the presence of God tending to you and leading you. So in my early 30s, I found myself very lost and very alone. I had been navigating a lot over my early adult years. Trauma, grief, fear, fear of the unknown, fear of my choices. My mother had just passed away. My father was terminally ill. My siblings were leading their own lives and nowhere around. I didn't have any children. I wasn't married. In fact, I was fairly certain I was never getting married. <laughs> um, and I guess this is really, really not uncommon for a lot of 20-somethings. But at this point in my life, I was spiraling out of control. I'm sure some of you have had those moments in your lives where you can think back. Maybe it was last week. Maybe it was when you were 20 where you felt like you were spiraling out of control. To the outsider, it wouldn't have really been apparent that anything was wrong. I had already been a successful business owner. I was an attorney. And there was a world of possibilities in front of me. But on the inside, I was literally at the precipice. So on this particular day, just to make the last decade or so a little more interesting, I found myself in a critical medical condition, being raced across the UCI Medical Center parking lot on a gurney. As I lay in the ER, surrounded by chaos, all the noises, I was alone. And I was pretty certain I was going to die that day. If truth be told, I wanted to die that day. I was ready. I'd had a lot. My life was hard. And I was only in my early 30s. And I was by myself. I thought I was by myself. It was at that moment in my head I decided I was going to surrender to the inevitable. And I was good. That was really good. I felt at complete peace, complete and utter peace, with the idea of dying. For the first time, I was truly not afraid. After all, I knew God. I'm a cradle and Episcopalian. I knew Christ. I knew death was going to bring heaven to me. And I was really, 
really good with that. And by the way, I really wanted some answers. How many of you have sat there and thought, why? Why is this happening to me? Why did that happen to her? Why do we have war? Why do we have grief and trauma and all those negative things? Because that's where we tend to go. Instead of going to, wow, I am alive and there's so many wonderful things out there. But it was in that moment. All the sounds and the chaos around me blurred away. It's kind of like a distant rumble. You know, Charlie Brown. I could hear it sort of faintly, but I felt like I had just completely been engulfed in this little bubble. I remember thinking, this is it. This is what death is going to feel like. It's time. So I closed my eyes and I started to pray. I was going to have a conversation with God. I had conversations with him all the time, but this was a serious one. I had been allowed to wander off on my own and nobody seemed to care, including God in my mind. Even you, God, stood idly by and was letting this earthly world consume me. God answered. And this is a true story. But I didn't expect to hear what I heard. In fact, I'm sure we never can know what God is going to say or do. We're not supposed to. But what I heard was, you are one of mine. You think you strayed far away, and you think you're all alone and isolated. But I have never left your side. It was you, child, that failed to seek. It was you, child, that failed to trust me. I heard him say, come back to my flock. What I didn't hear was, it's going to be easy. I didn't hear that I would have no more strife. I heard, you do not have to be afraid. I am with you. I heard, you will know hope. I heard, I will comfort you. I heard that I needed, I, me, needed to find that kernel of faith again. I heard, you need to trust me alone. God had not forsaken me. I just needed to trust his divine plan. The next day, after a visit with my parish priest, yes, there was a next day, because guess what? I didn't die. <laughs> yeah. The nurse came in to see me, and she handed me a little prayer card. And she told me that someone had left that little card at the nurse's station, and she was planning to just throw it away, but as she started to do that, she said, I heard a little voice, and it told me to come and bring it to you. Divine intervention. Because on that little prayer card was the 23rd Psalm. So I'm not the only one who's had this experience. It's clearly stayed with me and will forever. Um, but also, we have a lot of that experience and we hear that in our biblical history. Christian mystic, Julian of Norwich, uh, learned of God's abiding care in the midst of hardship through her series of visions. 
She was also about 30 and on her deathbed. While I am on her deathbed, she saw intense images of Christ. Lady Julian did recover, and she spent many years reflecting on these visions. And she wrote, If there be anywhere on earth where a lover of God is always kept safe from falling, I know nothing of it, for it was not shown for me, but this was shown, that in falling and rising again, we are always kept in the same precious love. Between God and the soul, there is no in-between. He did not say you will never have a rough passage, you will never be overstrained, you will never feel uncomfortable. But he did say, you will never be overcome. The reason we are not overcome, the reason we can make it through those valleys and rejoice in the rising, is that we are never alone. Our shepherd will always be alongside us. So where will I, where will you, where will we see the Holy Trinity guiding us today, tomorrow, and next year? I don't know, but I trust that my shepherd will be there. So I invite you to listen deeply to yourselves. I encourage you to trust. Let us be like the sheep, not as mindless followers, but as the disciples of Christ, growing our relationship with God, who is working to redeem our world, one precious life at a time. And yes, this is certainly about love. The maker of heaven and earth knows you by name, has always loved you, and will never give up on you. God will be with you, whatever you face. In the name of our Father, 